finally, after what feels like a lifetime of waiting, the 2.0 version of Toon Squid has been released. Here are, in my opinion, some of the most important effects that have been added. So, let's start with Gaussian Blur. I have made an animation of a drop falling on a leaf, and I want the camera to focus on this nearest leaf through a blurring effect. I will start by selecting the group, and then selecting properties. Now up here, we will see effects with a plus icon. I will press this and a list of different effects will come up. I am going to select the Gaussian blur effect. And now you can see, we can change how blurry it should be using the slider. Let's make it so it starts off blurry and goes to focused when the drop falls on the leaf. We'll head to keyframes and animate blur radius, starting with blur. And then when we want the camera to focus, we will make it less blurry. Now you can see the leaf turns from blurry to not blurry. We can make this a bit slower if we want. Now let's do the background. First, we'll start by selecting the background and then we will apply the same Gaussian blur effect. We will decrease this, and then, once the leaf focus, we will make this background blur. We will do the same with this leaf as well. And now we have a lovely blurring effect where the camera focuses onto the nearest leaf. This is an animation I made of a rocket flying through the air. The only problem, it doesn't look engaging enough, so I'm going to add a shaking effect to the rocket. To do this, I'm going to go to properties again, and then the effect I will choose will be noise. Now, just by playing it now, we can see the rocket moves around. But I want the rocket to move in all directions, not just on the Y axis. So, I will add another noise effect and select the X axis. Now we can see it shakes slightly. If we want, we can adjust this to make it shake a bit less. Now when we play the animation, the rocket will shake slightly. This next effect is called Orient Along Motion Path. This is basically when a asset moves along the motion path it's been given. For example, we have this arrow and it moves in a triangle pattern. And when you play the animation, you can see it orients along this motion path. And without this effect added, you can see it just stays in the same direction. So to activate this, we again go into properties and when we select effects, we scroll down here to orient along motion path. With this selected, it will then go along the motion path. If you want, you can also make the motion path different shapes. For example, let's make this an oval. Now when we play it, you can see it orients along the motion path really nicely. For this next effect, we're going to apply some spin to this windmill. As you can see, when I play the animation, the windmill does not spin. To do this, we're going to select the layer we want to spin, making sure that the pivot point is in the middle. Then, we'll go on to Properties, Effects, and we'll select Spin. When we play the animation, you can now see that it spins. We can adjust the speed of this using this slider. Now you can see it spins in a lot more reasonable speed. You can also change the direction of the spin. One of the best effects added in the 2.0 update, in my opinion, is the parallax effect. This is an effect that gives the impression of depth. To add it, we'll go into properties of all the layers. For example, we have the first line of trees selected and we'll go into effects and select parallax. We'll turn this up slightly, but not too high. We'll then do the same for this layer of trees. We will turn this up slightly more. And finally, for the last layer of trees, which also has the Gaussian blur effect enabled, we'll just select parallax like that and turn it up way more. Now, when we move the camera, we can see that it moves in a parallax effect. If we animate the camera moving across this forest, it now applies a parallax effect. Now, this is probably one of the most significant effects added in this update. This is known as the bones effect, and it doesn't act like normal bones in hierarchies, as it does not require different layers. As you can see, this is an animation I made earlier using this effect. And it is all on a single raster layer. 
To apply this effect, we'll go onto Properties, Select Effects, and scroll to Bones. This is under the Rigging Group. Now, using this icon on the side, we'll apply the bones, and it should look something like this. When we move the bones, we can see it slightly looks like a rigged character. We can apply some adjustments to it to make it seem a bit more realistic. The first adjustment I'll be doing is increasing the strength of the wrist bone. This will make it a bit more realistic when you turn it. As you can see, we can see the difference between this and this. You can also apply rotation limits to make sure it doesn't move in a weird fashion. Moving on to the next limb, we can see it moves in a slightly weird way. So we're going to increase the strength and we can see a bit more normal. But there's something going on around here, so we'll just change that using the last limb. And now we can see it moves like a rigged bone. You may argue it doesn't look as realistic as the original transform hierarchy, but I think it's really cool and you can do it with vector layers also. Here is how. You're gonna create a simple arm using a vector brush or shape. You're going to add the warp effect. When you use the bone feature now, it should work like so. It is essential you use the warp or mesh effect along with it and this is why if i delete the warped effect we can see that the bones don't really move like a limb and that is bones there's a lot more to it than that but if you want i can make a longer tutorial in the future the next effect we'll be going over is the mesh effect and this can create some really cool animations as you can see this animation isn't perfect as i haven't really mastered this effect but I'll teach you how to do it besides. Our first step is to go into properties like the other effects and select mesh. Now, you'll be given three options. One to add the mesh effects, one to take them away, and one to adjust them. Keep in mind that anything that is not in the mesh will be cropped out. I'm gonna start by creating a mesh for this caterpillar like so. And now this is a very simple mesh, but we can animate it in quite a realistic way. Obviously, the more points you add, the more realistic it will be. I'm gonna add a few more points and try and make this caterpillar walk in a convincing manner. Now, as you can see, the caterpillar walks in the way a caterpillar would, I guess. But an interesting thing to point out is that its antennas have been cut out once they animate it. These, in my opinion, are the most important effects added in the 2.2 update of Toon Squid. If you think there are more effects you want me to go over, I'll make them in the next tutorial. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about these effects and get tips and tricks from real Toon Squid animators, join the Toon Squid Discord server I've linked in the description. It's an amazing community and I promise you it's worth joining. Thanks for watching and I really hope you've learned something from this video. Happy animating!